What exactly was Robert's rebellion, and how did it change Westeros, explained. The popular HBO series, Game of Thrones, embarked on the story by introducing the death of Jon Arryn. And although he died too soon, he was a strong and important character in the book. Jon Arryn rebelled against the Mad King. His support of Robert Baratheon and Eddard Ned Stark gave rise to the countrywide revolution that ended the Targaryen dynasty and was famously known as Robert's Rebellion. If you are a Game of Thrones fan, you would know that the series has given us some gruesome information about the events that led up to the death of the Mad King. But, most of it remains a mystery. In this video, we will dive deep into Robert's Rebellion and the Tryst of Lyanna Stark in great detail. But before we begin, please consider subscribing to us, it may be a small click, but it goes a long way for us. Let's begin. Number 1, A Little Backstory of Robert Baratheon Robert Baratheon, the formidable king we have seen in the Game of Thrones was the first son of Stefan and Cassana Baratheon. He had two younger brothers, Renly and Stannis, and his parents died when their ship was caught in a storm when he was just a child. He acquired the Lordship of Storm's End and was raised by John Arryn, the head of another great house, House Arryn. John Arryn also took care of Ned Stark, and Robert and Eddard became as close as brothers. Robert served the Mad King as the Lord Paramount of the Stormlands and was betrothed to Lyanna Stark, Ned's sister. Although a potent warrior like most of Baratheons and showcased the talent of leadership and warfare from a young age, Robert was thought to be an extremely good man at heart, but people did not recognize it because he appeared to be a vicious, and a heavy drinking party animal on the outside. He had a penchant for stiff drinks, women, tonies, and ostentatious parties, which he indulged in after the end of his revolution against the Mad King. Empty. There's no more wine. Is that what empty means? So get more. Possibly to drown his anguish over the loss of Lyanna. People often said he was a drunken fool and couldn't see past his intense fury. Number 2, The Tony That Killed All Smiles Lord Walter went hosted a grand tournament at Harrenhal in 281 AC. Many elites from across the Seven Kingdoms arrived at the Riverlands to celebrate. Brandon Stark, Ned's elder brother, and his younger siblings, Ned, Lyanna, and Benjen, were also present. The tourney's most notable visitor, however, was the King Ares II or the Mad King. Ares had not left the Red Keep in many years, ever since his half-year abduction during the defiance of Duskendale in 277 AC, but his master of whisperers, Varys, inspired him to attend the festivities held in honor of his son and heir to the Iron Throne, Rhaegar Targaryen. The tourney was the reason for a joyous event, as spring had arrived in Westeros, or so men thought. In addition, the entire Kingsguard had assembled to welcome their newest addition, Sir Jaime Lannister. During the feast, Rhaegar, a well-known musician, sang a beautiful and sad song that made Lyanna cry. However, the tournament was won by Rhaegar, who defeated Lyanna's older brother Brandon, Lord Yon Royce, Sir Arthur Dane, and Sir Barristan Selmy. The victorious Rhaegar then pushed his horse past Elia, laying the blue winter rose laurel in Lyanna's lap and proclaiming her the queen of love and beauty, leaving everyone stunned and silent. This act was used as proof by the lords who colluded against Rhaegar that the crown prince was plotting against Ares. Eddard Stark describes this moment as when all smiles died. There was much supposition about how Robert Baratheon reacted to Rhaegar crowning Lyanna, some alleged that he scoffed and stated that the prince was only paid Lyanna her due, while others tried to claim that he felt offended by Rhaegar's involvement in his betrothed, causing him to retain a powerful grudge against the crown prince. They also asserted that he disrespected his wife by coronating Lyanna in order to gain House Stark's support in his alleged attempt to replace his father. But, if that was his intention, he ended in failure because the act irritated Brandon, who saw it as a slight against Lyanna's honor. He had to be persuaded not to encounter the prince. Number 3, The Alleged Abduction of Lyanna Stark Lyanna Stark, like her niece Arya, appears to be strong, independent, tomboyish, and willful at first glance. Lyanna was a lively and self-assured young girl, 
as demonstrated by her prowess as a rider. Furthermore, despite being a remarkable woman from a powerful family, she was unusually kind to those of lesser birth than herself, as evidenced by her pleasant treatment of Willis, a mere stable boy compared to her being a great lady from a powerful family. Liana also demonstrated her practicality by stating that with Ned leaving for Erie, someone would be required to train their younger brother Benjamin. Who's sparring? Who are you going to spar with when Ned goes off to the Erie? I don't know. What about him? Liana Stark's kidnapping was believed to have happened briefly before the outbreak of Robert's rebellion. She adored and, more notably, trusted her brother, she expressed genuine gratitude that it was he who discovered her, moreover, Liana freely admitted to him that, despite her deep desire to be brave, she was scared to die. I want to be brave. I don't want to die. The kidnapping of Liana Stark by Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, was one of the primary causes of the revolution. Lyanna was to wed Lord Robert Baratheon, the young head of House Baratheon, while Prince Rhaegar, heir to the Iron Throne, wedded the Dornish Princess Elia Martell as a result of a political deal. After Lyanna was kidnapped, her older brother Brandon rode to King's Landing rather than River Run to marry Caitlin Tully, demanding that King Aerys, Rhaegar's father, have Lyanna given back and Rhaegar reprimanded. His father, Rickard Stark, was brought to ransom after he was taken captive and convicted of treason. Ares counselors prompted him to pardon Brandon Stark because Rhaegar had taken away his sister and was the Warden of the North's heir. Even so, in his false belief and lunacy, the Mad King had them both executed. The Mad King then dispatched a raven to Lord John Arryn, demanding that he hand over Rickard's second son and Brandon's younger brother, Eddard Stark, as well as Robert Baratheon, the Lord of Storm's End who had been trying to cultivate at the Eyrie. Instead, John Arryn mobilized his bannermen and revolted against the throne. He then dispatched Robert to the Stormlands and Eddard to the north to do the same. This was the beginning of Robert's rebellion. Number 4. Robert announces the rebellion. Houses, Stark, Arryn, and Baratheon all raised flags and began amassing armies. John and Eddard began talks with Lord Hosta Tully, whose daughter Caitlin had already been set to marry Brandon. After some deliberation, Eddard wedded Caitlin in place of his brother, while John wedded her sister, Lysa. House Tully then decided to join the rebels in the war, issuing a full call to arms. When King Ares realized what was going on, he called up his banners. The houses inducted directly to House Targaryen reacted, as did the forces of House Tyrell, which compelled the Seven Kingdom's most populous region and, thus the largest army. While House Martell publicly voiced allegiance, Prince Doran was incensed at the affront to his sister's honor and managed to muster his troops with extreme sluggishness. Distressingly, Tywin Lannister did not respond to Aerys' subpoena, and did not summon up his forces, failing to submit from the rebels to join them as well. House Greyjoy, as usual, chose not to meddle in the matters of the mainlanders. During the war, Stannis Baratheon fought for his elder brother Robert. For much of the war, Ares used his house Tyrell allies to invade Stannis at Storm's End. The crime boss Davos saved Stannis's army from hunger by bringing a ship full of onions and fish into the castle. Prince Rhaegar Targaryen joined the war leaving Lyanna, a tower of joy but was soon assassinated by Robert himself during the Battle of the Trident. The location of his death is now known as the Ruby Ford because it is said to be strewn with rubies from the fallen prince's armor. Tywin Lannister chose to join the dispute in the final moment. He paraded a huge army to King's Landing and asked to be permitted into the city to assist in its defense. Ares made the error of placing his trust in an old friend and instructed the gates to be opened. The battle is over. We have won! <laughs> the King's Landing was sacked as soon as the Lannister host arrived. Number 5, The Mad King's Sealed Fate Aerys Targaryen was the father of Queen Daenerys Targaryen and her older brothers, Crown Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, and Prince Viserys Targaryen. The long-standing Targaryen practice of incestuous marriages within the family appeared to have taken a toll on the health of some progeny in the line. Ares was an adored king who was recognized for being a just, peaceful, 
and highly regarded ruler when he ascended to the Iron Throne. However, after being incarcerated in a revolution known as the Defiance of Duskendale, Ares fell victim to madness and returned violent retribution on his offenders after being rescued by his taken oath Kingsguard Knight, Sir Barristan Selmy. In the years since, Ares had grown increasingly resentful of his hand of the king and old friend Lord Tywin Lannister, even knighting Tywin's eldest son Jaime Lannister to the king's guard, which meant he could no longer inherit Casterly Rock and could never marry, abandoning Tywin with his daughter Cersei Lannister and scorned, dwarf, son Tyrion Lannister to acquire. Lord Denys Darklan of Duskendale wished greater independence from the throne and quit making the required payments. When Ares was encouraged to discuss things, he walked right into a trap in Duskendale and was held captive for six months before being saved by Sir Barristan Selmy. After being set free, he executed the entire house of Darklan. The exclusion and fear of his confinement hastened Ares' descent into insanity, and he hasn't left the Red Keep in years. He began to distrust his son, and he became progressively cruel. He committed murder, became fascinated with green wildfire, and generally did whatever he pleased. He became afraid of sharp objects and refused to have his hair or fingernails cut, and his fear of toxins caused him to become frail. As a result, Ares became known as the Mad King. When Rhaegar allegedly kidnapped Lyanna Stark, her brother, Brandon, marched to King's Landing and demanded that he release her. Rather, he found Ares, who had incarcerated him, and summoned his father to King's Landing. This resulted in Robert's rebellion and Ares' eventual downfall. His obsession with wildfire had led him to hide caches throughout King's Landing, which he intended to blow up if the city fell. Jaime postulated that, like his insane great-uncle Arian the Monstrous before him, Ares believed he would not end up dying in the Inferno, but rather be turned into a dragon by the flames, giving him the ability to annihilate his enemies. However, before the plot could be carried out, Jaime assassinated Lord Rosset and then King Ares, stopping the instructions from reaching anyone else and thus rescuing the entire population of King's Landing, accruing him the moniker Kingslayer. The Targaryen dynasty's reign came to an end when Robert Baratheon asserted the Iron Throne. Number 6. The Aftermath of the Rebellion. After almost a year, the chaos in King's Landing came to a halt, but for the surviving Targaryens, it was going to be a tough journey from here on forward. Aerys' wife Queen Rhaella managed to flee to the Targaryen ancient seat on the Isle of Dragonstone while carrying a child. Viserys, her youngest son, followed her. Unfortunately, Rhaella died shortly after Daenerys was born, and the loyal retainers took the children into seclusion in the Free Cities. Stannis later conquered Dragonstone and was appointed Lord of Dragonstone. The Lannisters' horrific killing of Elia Martell during the sack of King's Landing managed to earn them the Martell's eternal hatred. Dawn had become a hotbed of pro-Targaryen feelings as a result of Elia's superfluous and easily preventable murder, and it took long and complex bargaining on the part of John Arryn for them to reluctantly abide in loyalty to Robert. House Greyjoy, like the Lannisters, stayed neutral for the majority of the war, ruled by Balon Greyjoy's father, Lord Kilion. Despite the resistance movement, he was a strong ruler and refused to take sides. However, after Rhaegar died, his sons persuaded him that they should join the rebels while they still could to share the spoils and appease Robert, who would soon become the new king. Robert claimed the Iron Throne since he was the first to engage in combat, and personally killed Prince Rhaegar. Robert was also the only rebel leader with a blood connection to the Targaryens on his mother's side. The others agreed to bend their knees. When Robert came to know about Lyanna's demise, he was devastated. She belonged with me. In my dreams, I kill him every night. But married Cersei Lannister as a gesture of gratefulness for her father joining his cause late in the war and delivering King's Landing to him. Tywin was still the Warden of the West. Robert appointed John Arryn as his hand, while Eddard took over as Warden of the North. Number 7. Lyanna Stark's Best Kept Secret. Lyanna Stark held a deep secret about her life that changed the trajectory of Game of Thrones. When the episode aired, people were shocked to learn it, 
and it might be considered the greatest and most disturbing plot twist of a story. When Eddard Ned Stark came to know about the location of a tower, Rhaegar Targaryen had named the Tower of Joy, he took up a search party in hopes of finding her abducted sister, which he did. What came next surprised him, she was dying of giving birth to Rhaegar's child. The rebels always thought that Rhaegar kidnapped Lyanna Stark, but no one considered that Lyanna ran off with him, which turned out to be the truth. Lyanna was in love with Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, and he annulled his marriage with Princess Elia Martell before the two ran off to Dawn and secretly married. Before she died, she told her brother the entire truth and made him swear to protect her child and her secret. Lyanna implored Ned to protect her newborn son, whom Robert and Tywin would almost certainly have brutally murdered, given his Targaryen ancestry. You have to protect him. Promise me, Ned. Ned pledged his sister he would protect him as she passed away, raising his Targaryen nephew as his own bastard son at Winterfell, and naming him Jon Snow. Eddard would return to Winterfell to find Caitlin Tully, who had married Eddard after Brandon's death, carrying their first son, Rob Stark, while Eddard introduced his nephew, as his bastard son sired on a campaign, tarnishing his honor and marriage and haunting himself and Caitlin for the rest of their lives. This truth came into play years after the rebellion. John has been treated poorly his entire life and had to live his life as a bastard when in truth he was the legitimate child of Rhaegar Targaryen, and Lyanna Stark and the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. Bran Stark and Samuel Tarly at Winterfell pieced together that Robert's rebellion, which ultimately results in the biggest shift of power in the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros since Aegon's conquest, was built on a lie, Rhaegar and Lyanna had loved each other and exchanged vows together in secret. Bran discovers Jon's true name is Aegon Targaryen, His name is Aegon Targaryen. and informs Sam that Jon, not his aunt and now lover Daenerys, is the true successor to the Iron Throne. That was all for this video, do hang around for more film and pop culture content. Do tell us your thoughts about the video in the comments down below. Stay safe, and have a good one.